How's it going everybody? I'm your host Sean with Paper Planes and this is my in-depth guide on the beginner classes for Dark Souls 3. An obscure knight of poor renown who collapsed roaming the land. Sturdy, owing to high vitality and stout armor. So the knight is typically going to be the safest class for beginner level players. It's got good armor, a decent shield, a solid weapon, and a stat variety that will allow close and ranged combat and has the smallest value in the luck stat. The equipment consists of the long sword, the knight shield, and the knight armor set. A mercenary and veteran of the battlefield, high dexterity allows masterful wielding of dual scimitars. The mercenary should be played as a fast paced melee character. You'll have the ability to dual wield immediately thanks to the starter weapons for this class. Select this option if you're looking for a high dexterity build for a nimble, light armor wearing melee and ranged character. Their equipment consists of the Cell Sword Twin Blades, the Wooden Shield, and the Cell Sword Armor Set. Descendant of Northern Warriors famed for their brawn, utilizes high strength to wield a heavy battle axe. The Warrior is a good candidate for those of you looking for a strength build. It begins with substantial health, high damage output, and a decent weapon and armor set. If you plan on having the ability to cast spells of any kind, skip this choice, as the attunement is very low. If you enjoy being up close and personal with heavy weaponry, then look no further than the Warrior. Their equipment consists of the Battle Axe, the Round Shield, and the Northern Armor Set. A former herald who journeyed to finish a quest undertaken, wields a sturdy spear and employs a gentle restorative miracle. The herald is somewhat of a hybrid class, I'd consider it similar to the cleric but it's less effective in that role. The herald's stats are spread somewhat evenly so it isn't effective in any one thing, so you'll be able to heal and keep enemies at bay, but you'll also take longer to kill those enemies as well. The equipment consists of the spear, the talisman, the kite shield, the herald armor set, and the heal aid miracle. A common thief and a pitiful deserter wields a dagger intended for backstabs alongside a military issue bow. The thief unfortunately has such a high investment in the luck stat that I don't consider it a viable option. Unless you plan on using this character to max out every single stat, you'll certainly regret having those stats wasted on luck. There is one upside to the thief though, and that's having a bow from the start. Ranged combat can be very fun and a nice change of pace, but I really can't recommend this class. The equipment consists of the bandit's knife, the short bow, the iron round shield, and the deserter armor set, as well as 30 wooden arrows. An assassin who stalks their prey from the shadows favors sorceries in addition to thrusting swords. The Assassin is definitely an interesting class, if you want a melee caster hybrid, this should be your choice. You begin with two attunement slots and a very effective combination of weapon and spell. You'll be able to use the two in conjunction to sneak up on enemies and get in very quick and deadly damage. Their equipment consists of the Estoc, the Sorcerer's Staff, the Target Shield, the Assassin's Armor Set, and the Spook Spell. A loner who left formal academia to pursue further research, commands soul sorceries using high intelligence. The Sorcerer in the past was a class I'd recommend to beginners, however this has changed drastically for Dark Souls 3. With the early game being so challenging and the Sorcerer having such little hit points and weak armor, as well as a weak melee weapon, you're really relying solely on your spells and dodging when facing tough enemies. This is not a good combination for beginners, so unless you're a veteran and want to be a complete casting build, I'd make another selection. Their equipment consists of the Mail Breaker, the Sorcerer's Staff, the Leather Shield, the Sorcerer's Armor Set, the Young Dragon Ring, and the Soul Arrow and Heavy Soul Arrow spells. A Pyromancer from a remote region who manipulates flame, also an adept close combat warrior who wields a hand axe. The Pyromancer is a personal favorite of mine from Dark Souls 1, however things have changed quite a bit in how you build this character, but I still believe it to be a very effective and versatile build. You'll need to invest in intelligence and faith, as well as melee stats, so this class is designed to be a melee casting hybrid. 
It's also very effective in early game, starting you off with powerful ranged and melee offensive abilities. Their equipment consists of the Hand Axe, the Pyromancy Flame, the Caduceus Round Shield, the Pyromancer Armor Set, the Great Swamp Ring, and the Fireball Pyromancy. A traveling cleric who collapsed from exhaustion channels high faith to cast many and varied miracles. The cleric is the choice for those of you who want to cast miracles and do substantial melee damage. You'll invest heavily in faith and attunement as well as strength for up close combat. Clerics can be a great choice for beginners as you'll have a decent offense but great survivability with many options to heal and remove ailments. Their equipment consists of the mace, the cleric sacred chime, the blue wooden shield, the cleric armor set, and the heal and force miracles. Naked and of unknown origin, either an unfathomable fool in life or was stripped of possessions upon burial. And finally we have the deprived, and this really isn't a class that anyone should consider beyond those of us that do soul level 1 challenges. Having 10 in all stats to start off is actually a very bad beginning. If you plan on leveling this character, as most of you will, you'll want to specialize a build to be the most effective. Having stats spread so evenly into all those areas makes for a master of none type character. The only people I'd recommend this to are those who want an extra challenge. Their equipment consists of the club, the plank, and the loincloth. So I just want to say I think it's most important that you consider what style of gameplay you'd enjoy most. Then narrow down your choices to those that complement that style of play and then pick whichever one has the best gear and or stat allotment for your projected build. And remember, classes aren't much more than starter gear and stat allotment. You can always shape your character how you like them as you progress through the game and you'll have opportunities to reassign your stats later in the game. Just not the ones that were chosen for you when you made your class selection. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, if it was helpful to you, please stick around for another 40 seconds so you can learn about how to help support my channel and become part of the Paper Planes community. We'll see you guys later. Peace. Hey everybody, I just want to take a quick moment to say thank you so much for all the support you've been showing me throughout the years, and I want to keep doing this forever. I know you guys know that I love making YouTube content, so if you could help me out in doing so, all you need to do is visit my Patreon account. You can click on the i in the corner, you can visit the link in the video description below, or you can just go to patreon.com front slash paper planes channel. There you'll be able to learn about all the cool ways you can help me out and also get neat perks by doing so. I really appreciate it you guys and I hope to find out that you've become a patron of mine soon. Take care and we'll see you in the next one.